So every time Monica answers one right, I get to have an almond joy. <laughs> okay, so buffers controlling pH is huge. Well, inside your own body it's huge. There's two major buffer systems. But in chemical industry, buffers are used Pretty much wherever you see a weak acid, you have a you have a buffer, a buffering system. So in making nylon and producing food products, there's a lot of uses for buffers. So the purpose of a buffer, Monica, is to resist changes in pH. Excellent. One for me. Desiree, all buffers are mixtures of blank and blank. All right. Ricardo? Acids and bases. Close. Conjugate acids and bases. Because if you say acid and base, Pretty much means, like, picture in my head, I'm thinking HCl and NaOH. That's what I always think, right? Acid uh -huh. and base. Well, you mix those two, they're going to react immediately, right? So there's no real equilibrium going on there. So more specifically, it would be the conjugate acid and its corresponding base. conjugate base. So they have to be matched. Conjugate acid and its conjugate base. So how do buffers accomplish their task, Jackie? What's their task again? What's the purpose of a buffer? You just change the pH. So if I add a little bit of acid or add a little bit of base, you don't want the pH to change. That's the task. How does it accomplish it? In, in your in your cells, drink a can of Coca Cola and you don't have acidosis. How does it buffer this? If you drink something that's acidic, the conjugate base, base has to react, right? So they'll it can't keep the pH perfect, right? You add a little bit of acid. And it's, it'll react with that acid, and your pH is going to drop a little bit, but not near as much as it would have without that buffer. So the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So I think whenever you see the word buffer, this is what we need to jump at. Okay, but, but let's see if we can, we can get it. So let's take the, uh, here's our, our weak acid expression, right, our Ka expression. And then you have the Ka expression, products over reactants. So if I take the log of both sides, I'll have the log of Ka equals the log H plus A minus over HA. Now what's the rule with logs, Andy? Like you have a log and you have all these things being multiplied and divided. What's, what can you mess with with logs? So, yeah, like if you have log of A times B, that's also equal to, like, like if I have the log of A times B, that's also log of A plus the log of B. What if I had the log of A times B divided by C? Yeah, log of A plus log of B minus log of C. So let's play the same game over here. So we have the log of Ka, but we just want pH. So I'm just going to pull out the, geez, pull out the hydrogen ion, log of hydrogen ion, and leave the other one there. Because it's going to be really useful 
to have pH in an exp that's what Henderson Hasselbalch is so useful because it has pH in it. Saying, oh, okay, what's the pH of this buffer system? You're always interested in pH. Now, pH isn't really log of H plus. It's really, it's really what, Jeff? Negative log. negative log of H plus. So multiply a negative sign through. Negative, negative, negative. Okay. So. Marlena, this one is pH. What's negative log of Ka? If negative log of H plus is pH, negative log of Ka would be pKa, right? pKa. And we'll leave the other one alone. OK. OK, we're almost there. OK, this is what we're trying to get at. So I guess we'll bring the negative log over to the other side, right? And it'll be really close to this expression. But what happened to the, this is, shouldn't this say concentration of A minus over concentration of HA? Shouldn't it? Kelly? Right? You see what we did. All we're going to do is you bring that log term over to the other side, and it's going to look just like this except it has moles in it. Why can we say that? And the reason I like this one, in fact, I made this big mark saying, hey, this is the equation we're going to use for Henderson Hasselbach. It's a lot easier to, it's very convenient. But why can we go, why can we, can we erase the concentration brackets and just write moles? Both of these, conjugate acid and conjugate base, are in the same solution. That means they have the same volume. volume. They have the same volume, right? So the volume just cancels. And this is going to be much more convenient, especially for Monday's class period. OK. Heath, Mr. Heath. OK. So this isn't the true Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. The true Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA. This one's just a lot easier. It will really help us much more straightforward in the homework. So when the volume of a buffer changes, the ionic strength changes. So Monica, we're back to you. So if the ionic strength changes, the pH changes. And this is just a real life scenario. I just, you just have to take it on faith that that happens. You add water to a buffer, the pH changes. And that's because the ionic strength changes. So improved predictions, so for improved predictions, when using this equation that we wrote, it's best to use activities. Yes. I'm addicted to these things. Appendix G, page AP11, it's in the back of the book. It lists a whole lot of weak acids and their corresponding pKa values. How do you pick the best buffer for your application? Desiree, how would you answer that question? I mean, I've got a bunch right. Ah, yeah, here's it. Here it is. This is what it looks like. And it just, there's like nine pages of this. And you know that you want to buffer your system, keep the little critters alive, the little bugs or whatever's in your solution. How do you pick the buffer? PKA. You go by pKa. OK, so you want pKa to match what? You want, she said, go by pKa. Just half, it's just half the story, though. It's, you're right, but pKa needs to match pH. That's it. You want your pKa to match your pH. So you go through this whole big list, and you find the, the one that is as close as possible to your pH that you're interested in. Okay. So if you want to 
buffer at pH 4.6, boy, that'd be a great one to use. Okay? And how do you make up that buffer? That's what we're going to talk about next. But let's finish this story here. So you pick a buffer by saying pH equals pKa. Pick the one that's, that's the closest. Now, why does that work, though? Ah. The answer is really in here. Why would you do that, Ricky? Why would you pick a buffer whose pKa is closest to the pH that you're interested in? Why? Because I think that's, if I remember right, the pH where the, the, the molecule goes between the acid and base form. So it goes from here to here and here to here at that point, like with amino acids. Well, with, with, with all equilibria, mm -hmm. you have, like if you have our Ka expression, we're not supposed to be writing single arrows. We're supposed to be writing double arrows. So it doesn't really matter what the pH is. You always have a chemical equilibrium going on between the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. That's always occurring. But what's so special about pH equals pKa? Jackie, what's so special? Anybody see it? If I want pH, where's that equation go? Here's the equation. If I want pH to, to equal pKa, that means this term had better go to what? Zero. How do I get that term to be zero? The log of what number? One. So I want the log of one. Well, how do I get one here? Top and the bottom have to, be the, have to be the same number. So that means you have the exact same moles of A minus and the exact same moles of HA. You remember how a buffer does its job. If you add some acid, the conjugate what has to react? Base. base. If you add some base, the conjugate acid has to react. So you're right in the middle of the buffer region. It's almost like a population story, right? That you want equal populations of A minus and HA because that's your application. You don't know if you're going to be adding acid or base. Right? You, you just want to be right in the middle, and then you're, you're hedging your bets as best as you can. So that's why you pick pH. To, it doesn't have to be exactly the pKa, but the closer they are, then the more equal the populations are, and it's a better, better buffer because you don't know if you're adding acid or base to your system. Where did it go? Okay. Once, here we are, once a buffer is chosen, it is prepared by, and then they want you to know it, okay? So there'll be some homework that says, how do you make this buffer? And pretty much all you do is you mass out what you need, right? And then you add it to some water. But don't, if they want, ah, let's say if they want 100 milliliters, don't put it in 100 milliliters, because you can get points knocked off, because it's not going to work. You, if they say they want 100 mils of buffer, right? you do the math, and you figure out the grams you have to add, and, but don't put it in 100 mils. Just say, put it in 70 milliliters or whatever. Because look at that step two. You have to add oh, some, hydro, some hydroxide or some, some strong acid or some strong base. And you just sit there just dropwise and add the stuff with a little pH meter in there until the pH is where you want it to be. Then once the pH is where you want it to be, then you do the last step and fill it up to the mark with water, right? You get it to the final volume. So you don't, to me that's the only trick, is this very first step. Dissolve in water, but make it less than the volume that you want. And there's no magic number, right? Just the majority of the water, three quarters or at least a half. So all weak acid systems, Andy, all weak acids, i.e. buffer systems, are named according to their blank form. Now hang on, what the heck is they talking about? Look at all these weak acids. Aren't they all new? Right, what the heck is this? The choices in the answer were, uh, uh, acidic, basic, and neutral. Okay, so here's all of our tables. How are you supposed to answer this? There is a neutral form? You mean some of these are positive? 
right? You look really close. Look at this, like, this 4-amino benzene sulfonic acid or sulfonylic acid. It's got a plus on it. So some of these acids that are written here have pluses. In fact, a lot of them do. The majority of them do. Does it look like, Andy, let's ask you this question before we build up to it. Does it look like in these tables, these are all acids? Or are there some conjugate bases in there too? They look, all, they look like acids. Yeah, and why do they all look like acids? Because they've got the hydrogen ions. Yeah, they have those big blue H's. So these are definitely all of the acids. And it's kind of makes sense because it's supposed to be an acid dissociation constant table. So they list the structures of all the acids. Okay, so some of these weak acids are diprotic. In fact, a lot of them are. They have two acidic hydrogens on there. But when, when I say conjugate acid, that's HA, conjugate base, A minus, that was just our general way of writing it, right? That doesn't mean that all conjugate acids are neutral, HA, all conjugate bases have a negative charge. No, not at all. So now back to the question. The question was, all weak acids, Jeff, are named according to their neutral form. What is it called then? Neutral form. So there's phosphoric acid buffer. They call it phosphoric acid buffer? Yes, and they hang on. If you find it, it would be, uh, let's, 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 you mentioned it, so let's go way down. He had to pick something with a P. <coughs> way down here. Did he even have it? I don't know. OK. He said phosphoric acid buffer. So all of them are named according to their neutral form. So when you say phosphoric acid buffer, OK, does that name correspond to the conjugate acid form or the conjugate base form? Now remember, the name always corresponds to the neutral form. So these are all the names, and all the names correspond to the neutral form. But if you look over here, not all of them are neutral. So, you, so phosphoric acid, is this thing neutral? Do you see any pluses on it? No. So this definitely is the neutral form. Is this the form that's in the table? Yeah, so this is the acidic form. So phosphoric acid corresponds to the conjugate acid form. So that's the game we're, we're playing here. How about, uh, I don't know, we'll pick a, I want to make sure I don't pick one that's in the, that we're doing, proline. You're going to make a buffer, Marlena, of proline. OK. So you see a little bottle on the shelf, and it says proline. Hmm. OK. So that name, it corresponds to the neutral form. Are you pulling off the shelf the conjugate acid or the conjugate base? If it says proline on it. Conjugate base because she sees the little plus here. You have to rip off an acidic hydrogen, right? You have to remove an acidic hydrogen. Now you've got, you've got that, the conjugate base. Now it's diprotic, but you've got the conjugate base form of the first, of the first hydrogen. See, the second Ka is, look at that, it's ridiculous. It's low, so it's not going to do much. But so the, she'd be pulling off the conjugate base. That's the game, that's the game that you're playing. So to adjust the, oh, here's, here's a better question. So she's going to make this buffer proline, right? And the pKa is around 1.9, OK? So I'm looking at this first one. So a pKa of 2. So she's going to pull it off the shelf. Does she only really needs HCl or NaOH to adjust the pH? She only needs what? Right. This corresponded to the, what form did you say? It's formed to the conjugate base form. So that means there, at the beginning, there is no conjugate acid form. So how are you going to get the conjugate acid form? You have to add some 
acid. So the only thing she needs is acid to adjust this pH. She doesn't need, unless she goes too far, then she's going to have to add some NaOH. Because this is an equilibrium. You're going to keep it sit there all day and bounce it back and forth. You're not hurting anything. Just, it's your final volume that you're worried about. OK, so let's see if we can play this game here of whoop, naming these guys. OK, Where are they? here they are. So you have the names. OK, so, oh, but you don't have the tables, do you? Unless anyone has their book. Let's look up the first one. You can tell me what they are, and I'll find them in the table. Formic acid. I remember the first one, so let's see if we can find formic. A, B, C, D, E, F. OK, formic acid is right there. So Kelly, the question is, formic acid, the names that correspond to conjugate acid or conjugate base? Conjugate acid. Good. Everybody agree? Formic acid definitely corresponds to the conjugate acid. Monica, what's the next one? Um, guanidine. guanidine. That's G. G. Oh, there it is. It's on the same table. Guanidine. Can you see it? Yeah, you might want to come up here. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, what else can you do? <laughs> Yeah, but isn't, what is, isn't that a little plus? Yeah. So there's a little plus there. So you have to make it neutral. So you have to, you have to, you have to remove the, you have to remove the hydrogen to make it neutral. So you just made the conjugate, conjugate base. base. So guanidine is the conjugate base form. Guanidine is A minus. Does that make sense? So guanidine corresponds to A minus. You notice in all of these buffer problems, in all of these Ka, Kb reactions, you never have to write the structure. All you have to do is recognize, oh, this is A minus. You need to write A minus. If you want to do a whole calculation, write A minus plus H2O forms HA plus hydroxide. You don't need to write these whole structures out, even though it looks nice. It looks more chemical. And it looks like you know what you're doing, but more, but you don't have to. OK, so that's A minus. What's the uh, next one, Desiree? What is it? OK, so there it is. Can you see it? It's right here. So it corresponds to the A minus. Good, because you see the little plus there. It corresponds to the conjugate base. The next one. Uh, Ricardo, what's the next one? 2,2,bipyridine. Uh, bipyridine. OK, there's bipyridine. Can you see it? Up here. That corresponds to? plus, so base. It corresponds to the base. Bipyridine corresponds to the base. You pull that off the shelf, you're going to have to add some acid to adjust the pH to 4.34. So that's a, that's a buffer you'd pick if you want to buffer at 4.34. Uh, so for ethylamine, was that like CH3 or CH2 NH3? Is that what ethylamine looked like? I couldn't see it. Uh, a methyl CH2, and then it would be NH2. Yeah, because you need to make it neutral, so you have to remove that hydrogen. Oh, okay, it comes off. Yeah. Okay, so that's the basic form too. Yeah. Because that comes off. Yeah. Well, yeah. What do we say? The name corresponds to the. Name of the buffer. The corresponds to which form? Neutral form. Neutral form. So you have to make these neutral. And ethylamine. In this table is not neutral. These are all the the acid forms. So since it's got a plus on it, you have to make it neutral. So thereby, it's going to be the conjugate base form. There's a plus there? Yeah. You have to come up and see it. it so it does say NH3 or no? Mm-hmm. Oh, OK. I yeah, it says NH2. Okay. CH3, CH2. OK, here's a question, though. Andy, ethylamine. I want a bottle of this stuff. 
but I want it to be the conjugate acid form. And they sell it. What are they going to do to this? Add a what? Mm -mm. This is a, is this a, think of it this way. Is this a cation or an anion? It's a cation. cation. So if I want to make it a solid, a neutral compound, I just need to connect it to a, another, cation? Another ion, but specifically a anion. So I need to connect it to an anion. Now, the anion that I'm gonna, that they in the industry connect it to, is something that isn't gonna mess with the pH at all. What anions, Jeff, are there where, hmm, he's not gonna mess with the pH at all? What are those anions? Um, nitrate. Nitrate's one of them. What's another one? Not acid. The conjugates of the what acids? Strong. strong acids. All the conjugate bases of the strong acids. So chloride, nitrate, right? Bromide. Chloride is really common. Okay. So this would be your compound. Okay. Is that all of them? Or is there more of them? Do we do them all? Okay. A solution contains 63 different conjugate acid-base pairs. That's a lot of buffers. Among them is acrylic acid and an acrylate. So that's these two, acrylic acid and acrylate. It's corresponding conjugate base. With the equilibrium ratio of 0.75 for conjugate base to conjugate acid, what's the pH? Marlena, you have a game plan for that? Set up the pKa equation. Well, if we did that, we don't have anything to put in the initial row, though. Do you have an idea? Do you see what she's, she's talking, she's, Monica's recognizing that Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. That the big hint in this is that ratio of the conjugate base to the conjugate acid. And that shows up really nice in our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And you know what the pKa is? The only thing missing is the pH. What, what is the 63 different, what does this have to do with anything? Yeah. What's that? Nothing, right? Because it, well, they're, they're important. They're there. They're influencing the pH. But the point is, is your ratio of conjugate acid to conjugate base is 0.75. Whatever the pH is, it's fixed. Yeah, and everything had an influence on it. But it's determined. It's, it's at equilibrium. You're, you can take each, you can, have, you can set, calculate the pH 63 different ways, right? 63 different henderson Hasselbox. They're all going to come up with the same pH. Because there's only one pH, it's one, so, one solution, right? So pH would be 4.25 plus the log of 0.75. Or do I need to flip it? No, it is the moles of conjugate base over conjugate acid, right? And the Henderson Hasselbalch. So it's, that'll work. Four point one three. Okay. Notice how the number it's it's a good number, it makes sense because the ratio is pretty close to one. So that means my pH should be pretty close to the pKa. So that's a good number. Maybe this is getting ahead, but I don't remember. If uh, 
Let's say we pick this buffer, Kelly. We pick this buffer, has a pKa. What, what's the buff, pH buffering region? I mean, how low can you go before you say the buffer's dead? Or how high can the pH go before you say the buffer's not working anymore? Yeah, they say, well, it's going to get worse and worse as it goes. Does anybody know? Plus or minus? One. It's plus or minus one. So it's, it's really good. This buffer should work really well between pH 3.25 and pH 5.25. So that's where you're safe to pick this buffer. But if you want a, P, a pH of 4.25, that's the best because the populations are exactly the same. But it'll still work plus or minus pH one, one pH unit. Describe how to prepare 100 mils of 0.2 molar acetate buffer. Starting with pure liquid acetic acid containing 3 molar HCl and, and you have some solutions of 3 molar HCl and 3 molar NaOH. Desiree, how would you do this? Jackie, you have an idea? No, it's not an MIVI, MFDF. They require two big M's. Or this is right here, this type of problem. That's where this is coming from. It wants you to do each of these three steps. But you can't just say mass the necessary grams. That's not going to get you any points. But I guess we can use the word mass, though. Mass what? 12.02 moles. Well, you have to do the grams and then dilute it to 100 milliliters to get the 0.2 molar. Yeah. Now, remember, remember there's that one step, though, where calculate the grams, and then just don't put it in what volume yet? Oh, yeah. Don't put it in 100 mils yet, right? Put it in what number? 75, who cares, right? Somewhere that's the majority of the water. Put it in that volume, and then you adjust the pH, then you bring it up to the mark. So how do you get the grams, Ricky? How do you get the grams? And then we have to find uh, the molar mass of acetate. Yeah, now let's say, let's say you, didn't, you, had, you didn't have any idea what acetate or acetic acid was. Where would you find this chemical formula? Where would you find this? Where would I find that chemical formula? Yeah. <laughs> in that table? In that table, exactly. You go find it in the table. And you see that it's eight. Well, remember acetate is C2H3O2, right? So there'd be acetic acid. Right? So how do you get those grams? Ricky, how do you get those grams? Just Take what? Well, yeah, okay, we'll get that of the grams from what we'll start at the beginning. Oh, well, I wanted to do um, x over 0.1 liters equals 0 0.2. So x over 0 0.1 liters. Uh-huh, because that would give me how many moles I need to have. So I need to have 0 0.02 moles of uh, You're doing... Acetate. Yeah, so I'm doing moles over liters. This? I know, I'm trying to follow what he's saying. Sorry, x over 0.1 liters. Oh, no. Just start, right? Okay. Remember how we did oh, this? 0.2 molar times. Remember how we did this? Okay, and then yeah, big M is what? Yeah, moles over liters. And a liter, you have 0.2 moles. Then you add all this stuff up <laughs> and put that many grams right here. All right? What you were doing, I think, I don't know what you were doing. I still don't know what you were doing. But. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> no candy bar for you. That's how I, that's how I do it. <laughs> Everybody has their own way. 
Yours, yours works somehow, though. Right. 59. Oh, it's 59? Yeah. OK, thank you. 59. 59. 1.08? 1.18? 1.18. Yeah, there you go. All right, so we're going to mass 1.18 grams of this liquid acetic acid, right? And add to how many mils did you say? All right. Add to 75 mils of water. Then what, Marlena? What, 60? 60 grams, yeah. Sorry. It's all right. So it's not 1.18 anymore. So it should be 1.20, right? 1.2. That's pretty close, right? Yeah. Okay, Marlena, what were you saying now? So we, we took the 1.2 grams of, of this acetic acid, this concentrated stuff, probably doing it in the hood. And then we dump it in, a, like we'll probably have a 100 mil volumetric flask or something, but we'll put it in 75 mils worth of water. It doesn't have to be exact, right, approximately. And then what do you do? Then adjust the pH. So you need to have a pH meter in there that's, pro that's hopefully calibrated, and you add some acid and base to get it to the pH that you're interested in, right? And they want it to be a pH 5. So you add your acid and base until you finally nail 5. And then once you, then well, she finished that. Then adjust pH to 5 using a pH meter and the acid base solutions. Now, Andy, now we're ready to finally do what? No. We got, we have our, we have 75 mils of this buffer at pH 5. We want 100, so we just add some. Add up, yeah, add, well, we don't know how many mils. I probably have a volumetric flask, right? Because you don't, you really don't care how much acid and base you're adding. You're just interested in pH. So you just have little beakers of NaOH and HCl and just keep adding it until you get the right pH. And then, Put it in a volumetric flask, 100 mil volumetric flask, and just fill it up to the mark with water. So I'm not sure exactly how much you'd add. So I'd say then dilute to the mark or something. On a volumetric flask. That'd be the easiest thing to do, I would think. We got a little bit of time left here. Given that pKb for nitrite is 10.85, find the quotient HNO2 or nitrite in a solution of sodium nitrite at pH 2. So any idea? Oh, well, you're going too fast. Oh, she caught it. I was hoping she wouldn't, but she did. Right? So she's just plugging, Monica's just plugging right into that Henderson Hasselbach expression. And the big hint was this ratio, right? Now, where'd she get the 1.29 from? Yeah, because 
PK, PKB is 10.85. So can we say PKB plus PKA is equal to what number? PKW, which is 14. So is 14 minus 10.85, 1.29? That doesn't look right, but it's pretty close. Well, all I'm saying is, is that we know, do you know that, do you agree with this expression? Okay, yes. Everybody agrees with that? So I can take the, the negative log, well, sorry, it's not the negative set. Let's do log first of both sides. Log of kw is going to be the log of ka times kb, which is log of ka plus log of kb. Whoop. And now I'll go through with your minus signs. Minus, minus, minus. So and negative log is my little p function. So I can say that pkw is pka plus pkb. So and if you're not, if you don't believe this is 14, just take the, you know, 1 times 10 negative 14, push, take the log of it, minus sign, you get 14. So 14 has to equal pKa plus pKb. So this number right here should be 14 minus 10.85. What you said is what? 3.15. Okay. Now they want us to solve for the acid form over the base form. So we got to get this thing on its own, on one side, then do what to both sides? But the log is already there, though. What's the inverse of LOG? 10. Raise both sides to the 10 power. So bring this 3.15 over to the other side, you've got a negative 1 something, right? And then raise both sides to the 10 power, and you're really close, you just have to do what to your answer? Because they want acid over base. We're solving for base over acid. All right? Let's make sure I don't lose you. Let's go ahead and do this. 2 minus is negative 1.15. And raise both sides of the 10 power. So how do I get what they want? What they want is the acid form divided by the base form. Just do what to both sides? One divided by it? Yeah, flip it. Flip both sides. So we'll flip this side, one over on this side, and one over on this side, and you'll have it. 14.13. So I got about. You take 10 to the negative 1.15, whoop, 1.15, make it negative 10 to that power, right? You get 0.07, but then you have to flip it. So 0 0.07, 08 or whatever. Now flip both sides. Shift one over. About 14.1 equals what we're after. The acid form over the base form. Okay. About a factor of 14. There's about 14 times more acid than there is base form. Then they want you to find the same ratio at a pH of 10. So you go through the whole thing again, but this time pH is 10. Okay. 
So we, we went over a little bit. So have a good weekend. All of these tables are in the back of the book. Uh-huh.